Hi, I'm Dr. Daniela Junqueira, and I want to present to you today the results of our research on the reporting of harms in clinical trials, an overview of the adherence to consort harms 2004. I have no conflicts of interest concerning this presentation to disclose. Consumers must have access to adverse effects information. Presentations at conferences are generally all about the happy outcomes, with almost no references publicly to the harms. We, the people, need to know the harms as much as any other aspect, because they happen to us. This is a quote by a consumer participating in a research survey, and I believe it perfectly illustrates the relevance of outcomes of harms to patients. Relevance to diversity. Most of the methodology developments of systematic reviews are based on the assessment of efficacy. Many systematic reviews do not even include in their protocols plans for the assessment of harms. There is a pressing need to produce high-quality evidence on harms, which required developments to inform their uptake in systematic reviews. A challenge, though, for the inclusion of harms in systematic reviews is the quality of the reporting of these events in publications of clinical trials. CONSORT The Consolidated Standards of Reporting Trials Statement is a guideline to improve the quality of the reporting of randomized controlled trials. RCTs. It was developed in 1996 and has been consistently updated. The most recent version dates from 2010. Specific guidance for the reporting of harms in RCTs is provided in an extension to consort, the consort harms, which was released in 2004 and not yet updated. To inform whether an update to consort harms was needed, we reviewed the reporting of harms in RCTs and assessed the impact of consort harms. We did this by performing a scoping overview comprised of reviews evaluating the quality of the reporting of harms in RCTs against the 10 items entitled by the Consult Harms Checklist. We included reviews of any healthcare interventions and published in any language from 2004 onwards. We conducted comprehensive search in nine electronic databases. We screened over 3,000 citations and 46 reviews met our inclusion criteria. Among these reviews, 17% focus on RCTs conducted in the oncology field. 15% focus on RCTs addressing pain treatments. 13% were focused on complementary and alternative interventions, and 7% concentrated on RCTs published in journals with high impact factors. Adherence to the 10 items of consort harms was explicitly assessed in 13 of the 46 included reviews. Among these, eight documented the absolute number of trials reporting the consult harms items. A total of 763 RCTs were assessed on those reviews. The table shows the percentage of trials 
reporting each item of consort harms. Most of the consort harms items were reported by less than half of the trials assessed in the reviews included in this overview. For instance, item 9 describes subgroup analysis and exploratory analysis for harms was reported by less than 3% of the assessed RCTs. Only two items of consort harms were reported by more than half, half of the RCTs assessed. Twelve of the 46 included reviews developed different checklists by modifying consult harms items. And the remaining reviews applied diverse coding systems to assess the reporting of harms in RCTs. These approaches were mainly justified by the consideration that some of the items of the consult harms checklist would cover a wide range of components. Six reviews comprising 872 RCTs compared the reporting of harms before and after 2004. The graphic illustrates the reporting, the proportion of reporting of the consult harms items by RCTs published before and after 2004. The comparative proportion of the reporting did not appear to have changed, with a median of reporting of 47%. The results of this overview of reviews evaluating the quality of the reporting of harms in anxieties led us to conclude that the reporting of harms remains inadequate in RCTs of pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions. The publication of consult harms in 2004, 2004 sorry, appears of limited impact, and items relevant to, to the interpretation of the results on outcomes of harms remain inadequately reported. Based on these results, we are collaborating to update consult harms, including a discussion if harms reporting should be included in the main consult checklist rather than being kept as a standalone extension. The initiative to update consult harms 2004 is coordinated by me supported by a highly experienced steering committee and has John Ionitz and Sunita Vora as conveners. Here you can see a summary of the development of the update of consort harms. It started with the conduction of this overview in 2017. We then deployed a modified Delphi approach to inform the update of the checklist, and the results are planned to be published in 2020. This is all I had for today. If you have comments or questions, please reach out to me. You can find me on Twitter or send me an email. Thank you.